Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We want to thank God for another Sunday morning that we can come out and not only praise him on Sunday, but praise him all during the week for his marvelous works. I will be uh, lifting up the globe today, and I also will be praying for all of you out there and uh, reading the scripture for you. But first of all, I want to mention um, the globe. As you know, here at Quinn Chapel, Pastor Robinson has been encouraging us to uh, purchase a globe and put it somewhere where we can pray for the whole world because the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And now we know that things have been happening this week all over the world in uh, Turkey and, and in Syria. And these are the, some of the places that we have lifted up and ask you all to be in prayer with us um, to purchase a globe and be a part of our global prayer ministry because prayer is much, much needed. And if you are a part or want to be a part of that ministry, uh, there will be information uh, at the end of the service that you can get in contact with us and really pray for other people. Um, the death toll in Syria and uh, Turkey has been past 22,000 uh, people that have lost their lives due to this earthquake mm -hmm. of a magnitude of 7.8. And uh, they say that the weather is cold there and it's raining. Uh, people really, really, really need our prayers. And we're going to pray for those who are searching and looking for people to find out if they are alive, the people that lay down their life, the rescuers, uh, for others. And we know that they may leave their family and need, leave their home to go out and put their life on the line to uh, rescue people that are in danger, not only people, the animals, and everybody. So we're going to pray that um, that uh, they get relief there and pray and encourage those families who have lost uh, uh, loved ones there. We're going to pray for all people that are in authority and all people that put their lives um, uh, in danger. So continue to be a part of this a global prayer ministry with us so we can pray for Syria, we can pray for Turkey, we can pray for the whole world and realize that those who are lost and don't know Jesus and the part of their sins, that they will cry out and say, what must I do to be saved? So Lord, we come to you in Jesus' holy and precious and righteous name. Father, we bless you, we praise you. We magnify your holy and righteous name and believe that you are God and you're God all by yourself. There is nothing too hard for you. So God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Syria, we lift up Turkey, we lift up places in the United States, God, of people that may be going through. And God, we pray for the rescuers that are putting their life on the line, God, to, to save others, God. Those are who in authority, the firemen, the soldiers, God, and everyone, God, that put their life on the line, the policemen, hallelujah, God, because we can find good in all of these people. So, Lord, we lift them up to you in Jesus' name and that you would encourage them, God, to let them know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. So, God, we continue to lift this service up to you. We continue to lift everyone up in this service, our pastor, who's going to be bringing forth the message this morning, hallelujah, God, that we may listen and change and, and, and just encourage us, God, to let us know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that, God, you have given us power, you have given us your son, Jesus Christ, and, Lord, we just thank and praise you. So, Lord, we are looking forward to what he has to say, God, as he speak, as you give him this message this morning. Lord, we thank and we praise you. We lift up those who uh, have loved ones that are sick. Hallelujah, God. We lift up those who have lost loved ones. We lift up those, hallelujah, God, that may be suffering from depression. And think about committing suicide. Hallelujah, God. We lift them up to you. We lift those up who don't know you in the pardon of their sins, God. And so, Lord, we thank and we praise you. And we magnify your holy and righteous name. In Jesus' name, I pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen and amen. 
Amen. The scripture will be coming from uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 30, from the New King James Version. That's 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 30, from the New King James Version, and it reads, It happened after that the people of Moab, with the people of, people of Ammon, and others with them beside the Amorites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are Hazaron Tamar, which is in Gay. And Jehoshaphat feared, set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? Or do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able, able to withstand you? Are you not God who drove out the inhabitants of the land before your people Israel and gave to the descendants of Abraham and your friend forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disasters come upon us, sword, or judgment, or pestilence, or famine, will we not stand before this temple in your presence? For your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and say, And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possessions which you have given to us to inherit. Oh my God, will you not judge them? But we have no power over this great multitude that is coming against us nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives, their children, stood before the Lord. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benai, the son of Jael, the son of Matinian, and a Levite, and of sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all of you of Judah and your inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem? Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites of the, of the children of the Korahites and the Korathites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and all shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should 
sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and was saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. But the people of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly just kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude and they were dead bodies. Falling on the earth, no one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables or the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering a spoil because there was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembly in the valley of Beraka. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the names of the place was filled with the valley of Beraka until this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. So they came to Jerusalem and with string instruments and harps and trophies, trophies <laughs> to the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdom of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet but his God gave him rest all around. The word of God for the people of God now present to you, Pastor Luke J. Robinson, Quinn Chapel, AME Church in Frederick, Maryland. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend Parker, for opening us up today. And we welcome all of you to be with us today. And this is, again, Quinn Chapel, uh, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we thank God for that. Um, uh, we're excited. I, I'm going to be talking today uh, about praise and the power of praise. I'm going to be sharing that. And, I, and, and, and coming in this morning uh, uh, for the service, I, I was reading Psalm 66, and it was so beautiful, and it sort of just tied in uh, with why, uh, why praise is so important. Listen to this. Psalm 66 says... Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth, the whole earth, ought to shout out to him. Sing out the honor of his, of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Uh, through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you. Uh-huh. And, and it says, and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Come and see the works of the Lord. He is awesome in his doing toward the sons of men. Amen and amen. I, I didn't select that because I, I had this um, scripture um, on my heart to share with you today out of, uh, out of um, Second Chronicles. Uh, God just gave that to me as a blessing and it says the same thing that I probably will be saying to you today. Uh, uh, the Bible says that all of God's enemies will submit themselves to us. And we'll see a little bit how that works today. How God, when I, his people seek him with all of their heart, will be able to send the, the devil to flight. He's got to go. Amen. And so we thank God for that. We do, along with people across the country and Christians around the world, uh, are, are, are really concerned about what has happened in Turkey uh, and in uh, Syria uh, to the lives of those people who have been uh, actually killed or displaced or whatever the circumstances has happened because of the um, 7.5 or 8 uh, uh, 
um, earthquake. Um, so we, we do our prayers go out to them again, as Reverend Parker has said, we ought to be about really just praising God and praying and asking God to bless people around the world. And one of the reasons uh, God is so concerned about the world is because there will come a day that when we will have to stand before him. And we want to pray that people, when they stand before God, will be caught up in Jesus Christ because he's the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way in. So I, I thank God for her sharing those uh, facts with us about uh, over 22,000 people have been uh, killed so that we can pray for the families and for the countries and for salvation to come to those places. We also are experiencing all kind of crises around the nation and the world. Uh, people are doing crazy things. Uh, uh, it look like they, they have lost their minds and, uh, and so they kill people and so many other things are happening that are vicious and mean and, and actually hateful. And so we come to ask God to bless the people that they might come together and love Jesus. And if we love Jesus, I tell you, we definitely going to love somebody else because Jesus is love. Amen. Now, let us pray. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, thank you so very much for this day. Thank you for the love that you have shown us. Thank you for being there for us all the days of our lives. And today, Lord, we stand before you in your presence, asking you, Lord, to bless us with this word, that somebody will be encouraged and strengthened by the word that we present today. Send your anointing, Lord God. Let all be done to the glory of God. Amen and amen. If you've been with us for the last four or five, maybe now six weeks, you will know that we have been preaching a series of sermons, uh, of messages that pertain to uh, we must evict the devil. The devil must go. And today we're in part six of that uh, 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 series of, of sermons. And, and the subtitle to that is The Power of Praising God Will Send the Devil Packing. The power of praising God will send the devil packing. Send your anointing. Again, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we've been preaching a series of messages, as I've already stated, that are encouraging us to put the devil out of our lives. If we allow God to work in us, then the devil will have to leave. You see, the devil and God cannot occupy the same space. So he has to go. So the more we embrace God, the more the devil has to back off. We must put the devil in check. <laughs> so you say, Pastor, what does that mean to put the devil in check? Well, it, 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 it means that if something or someone is held or is kept in check, they are controlled and printed, prevented from doing their thing. They are constrained. They are controlled. They are curbed. They are governed. They are inhibited or chained up or not free to enslave us. So what we want to do, we want to put the devil in check. We want to keep him from controlling us, from stealing our joy, from taking our life, from taking our power. And so we, we want to take the devil uh, and make him run. Now, they are, uh, um, uh, 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 the devil or whoever would be constrained. We, we push him away from him. Now the Bible says, and James chapter 4, we've been hitting on this a little bit in these sermons. Where do, where do uh, war and fights come from uh, among us? And they said, do they not come from the desires for pleasure that war in your members? Your, your inner body, your flesh, your nature is such that it wars. It just want to fight. So the Bible said you, you lust and you do not have. You murder and you covet. And you desire that is and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. You ask with the wrong, with the wrong motives that you may spend it on your pleasure, on yourself. And the Bible goes on to say, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know, listen to this, you do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? Enmity means hatred. If you love the world, if you are a friend of the world, you will actually, God says, hate him. 
Whosoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Isn't that amazing? Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns uh, jealously. In other words, the spirit of God that's inside of us is craving for us to love God. The spirit of God inside of us that dwells in us is yearning to be a part of what Christ wants us to be. But God says he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists those who are built up and proud and, and etc. But he gives grace to the humble. Those who lower themselves and, and look to him. Now, in our text today, Reverend Parker read for us 2 Chronicles chapter 21 through uh, verse 1 through 30. And that was the New King James Version. And, and we will find out how King Jehoshaphat and God's people humbled themselves before Almighty God and they defeated the devil and his forces. Furthermore, God tells us, tells them how to use a strange weapon to defeat the enemy. If we can do what God told Israel to do, I think it will work for us that we, like them, may uh, evict the devil, for he must go. The devil must be put in check. he got to be under control and control of the Holy Spirit and the saints of the living God. So you got stuff going on in your life. you got troubles going on in your life. The devil can be put under check if you allow the, the principles of God's word to be dwelling in your heart. Now we find in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 these words, it happened that the, the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and other uh, with others that uh, um, with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Now here, here you find out that God's people have a problem going on. They have not only one problem, they have uh, three people, three different armies coming against them at the same time. They are in a troubled situation. And some of us are now realizing that not only is the United States in a troubled situation, but the whole world is in a troubled uh, situation. Just recently in our country, this past week or so, uh, there was a spy uh, a balloon going through the country, looking at our military institution, taking things and, and preparing for uh, uh, how to defeat us in war. And sometimes people get to think that it's, it's our military might that keeps us from being destroyed or run over by other people. But, but basically, the, our defense is lost when we leave God out of the picture. When we walk away from God, then your military, your nuclear powers, your strength, your mighty army will not win the case. We're going to find that out today that even when three armies come against the people of God, it is not their three armies. It is the worship of God by the people of God and that we never forget God. And when we never forget God, we will find out that God will be there when we need him, when we need him. So the Bible, the, the Bible said in 2 and, and, and Chronicles chapter 20, verse 2, Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea and from Syria and, 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 and from En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout the, uh, uh, Judah. Here is an interesting thing. Uh, uh, God sent word to Jehoshaphat. And, and, and the word came to him that you in great trouble, King. We are in great trouble, King. The armies, three armies are coming. A multitude of enemy is coming. In. And this whole enemy represents the forces of hell. It represents Satan. It represents the devil. It is the enemy of God. And the Bible says that uh, uh, Jehoshaphat feared God. Feared. He feared. He was afraid of what was coming upon him. And the Bible said he set himself to seek the Lord. So some of you are going through something right now. And what God is saying, seek me. Seek me while you're going through this thing. It's difficult. Seek me right now because of the sickness or the, or the circumstances that you have in your life. Or your unemployment, your job, your children, your marriage, whatever it is. Seek me when you see the trouble. And so the Bible said that Jehoshaphat, when he got word, he, 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 he feared, 
And, and yes, that's the normal kind of thing that happens. And then the Bible said, he set himself to seek the Lord. He, he had fear, but he said, I, I got to go to the Lord. I've got to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed the fast throughout the land. As the king of, of, of Israel, he decided, though the enemy was coming, the devil is parking all through his land. The devil is taking over. And he's saying to the Lord, Lord, I will seek you. I'm asking the people of this country to pray and to seek my faith. Not to necessarily about worry about your military might, but to worry about the fact that your God is able to deliver you. I am the almighty God. And so Jehoshaphat sought the face of God and Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. We need to ask help from the Lord right now. When we said the other week, when we saw where the, the four or five or more police whipped up a man and killed him in the, uh, from, from, from right now, we still don't really know what was going on, why they killed that man, but that was not their call. Their call was to arrest him and take him in uh, if there was a problem, but that was not the case. But we see that darkness, we are facing darkness every day of our lives. So Judah gathered together to ask help of the Lord, and that's always a good thing. So we're asking you as believers in Christ, we need to come together. We need to come together and seek the face of the Lord so that we can help people, Lord, Lord, uh, yes, Lord, who are going through, through you. And that's what he did. He came to seek the face of the Lord. And the nation uh, that he was governing came to say, Here we see that they have a ma major troubles. We see the people of God having troubles. But, the, but they humbled themselves and they come, came seeking the face of God. Thank you, Lord. Verse number five tells us that Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of God of Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, Oh, God of our fathers. Listen to what he says. He's praying. Are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hands is there not power and might uh, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of the land uh, before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants. You know what he's asking God? He's, he's asking God to recall and to remember his promises to us. You see, God performs his word. God promises us stuff and it will come to pass. Eventually it will come to pass because he promised it to us. And he wanted to remind God of his position with God. Now, we as the children of God, as in the New Testament as well, we are to remind God of what he has said in his word. God will perform his word for us if we walk with him, if we seek him, if we humble ourselves. And today, God is going to give us a word that helps us to understand there is another powerful entity that can help us to overcome the wiles and the tricks of the devil. So he said, are you not God? And then he goes on and said, and gave, uh, 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 and, and gave this land to us uh, that, that these people are coming to take, trying to take from us. And, and, and are you not, uh, are we not the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And you know God loved Abraham, and God gave the land to Abraham, and God gave it to his descendants, and God said you will be multiplied like the numbers of the stars, and if you could count the numbers of the stars, you're going to count the greatness, the number of the people of Israel. So what the people, what, what Jehoshaphat, years later, after all of this, he looks back and he reminds God of who we are to you, because we are are the seed of Abraham. Beloved, let me talk to you. Because of who we are as a church of God, we are the seed of Jesus Christ. We belong to Jesus Christ. There is none like him. And he has made promises to us that in the midst of all what we're going through today, in the midst of Corona, in the midst of hard times, we have a promise made by God that he will be with us and he'll never leave us nor forsake. So we look to the hills from whence cometh our help. And the question is asked, where does our help come but from the Lord? Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20 and verse 8. And, the, and he goes on and says to the Lord, he's talking to the Lord. And, and they dwell in it. We have dwelt in the land. Our four parents. And, have, and, and Lord, not only that, we built you a sanctuary in this land that you gave us. 
We built you a sanctuary. We built you a place of worship. We built you a place where we can serve you. And we said to you, Lord God, we, we said to you, if disaster come upon us, sword or judgment or pestilence or, or famine, we will stand before this temple in your presence. For your name is the, in this temple, is in this temple. And we will cry out to you uh, uh, in our afflictions, in our troubles, in our times of difficulty. And you will hear and save us. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. My goodness. Do you know all the people are actually kin to them? Do you know that? These are kin folks. They're not of the, the promised seed, but they are Abraham's descendants. And they're coming because of jealousy, because God seemed to have left them out of the picture. They are coming. And they came out of the land of Egypt. And, and, and when we, our foreparents, came out of the land of Egypt, uh, when we were on our way out, they wouldn't help us at all. And we didn't destroy him. And he's reminding God of the history of these people to them. They came to us. And when we were coming out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of bondage, they wouldn't help us. And guess what? We didn't do anything to them. We came on by. We let them. Now, here they are. Years later, here they are coming to destroy us. And, and here they are rewarding us by coming to draw, uh, coming to throw us out of your possession which you have given us to inherit. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power, thank God. And some of us look around at what's going on around in our lives right now. And if you could confess really, you have no power against the great multitude of stuff that's happening against you. That is coming against you. Nor do we know what to do. That's an honest confession. We don't know how to handle all this stuff. That they didn't know how to handle it then. And, 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 and we don't know how to handle all this stuff that's coming down the pipe right now. But this is what Jehoshaphat said. But our eyes are upon you. America today and all church people, we must remember one thing. Our eyes should be upon the Lord God who is able to deal with what we're going through now. Some of us are dealing with a tremendous amount of fear and, and, and concern because of what's happening, the killings and, and the anger and the hate and the fighting and the cetera, and the fact that we have left Jesus Christ out of the picture. But if the church, if my people, it, it, it is as Israel's day was, uh, when Israel said, God said, when they built a temple, if, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, and what God is saying to Israel in this circumstance, well, you, you built me a temple, and now uh, uh, Jehoshaphat is reminding the Lord, our eyes on you because we don't know what to do. I believe today, church, that we still have the hope. We still have the answer. We still have the way because the way is in Jesus Christ. And Jesus is saying to us, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Lower yourself. And look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Now verse 30, 30, 13 says, Now all of Judah with their little ones, bring your children out to church. Bring your wives and your and the husbands and their and their children. Uh, and they all stood before the Lord. Thank God for that. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon uh, the, uh, the prophet Jehaziel. And you know what Jehaziel said? In, he stood up in the midst of the, uh, of the assembly in verse 15. He said, listen to, to listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. And you, King Jehazel, thus saith the Lord to you. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but the battle is God's. So what is God saying to 2023? What is God saying in these difficult times? God is saying the same thing. Be not afraid nor dismayed because of the great multitude, the great confusion, and all that's going on. This battle is, is the Lord's. It's not yours. It's God's battle. 
But I think the underlying verse uh, thought here is you're going to have to do it my way. Why are we not winning? Because we don't want to do it God's way. Now he's going to give them instructions. In verse number 16, he gives them instruction as to how to do this thing. And this is a new way, a new weapon, a new kind of thing that he wants to introduce to them. And verse number 16, he said, tomorrow go down against him. You go down. You're afraid, you have fear in your heart, but don't let that stop you. Go down against him. They will surely come up by the accent or up by the place called this. And you will find him at the end of the brook. God always leads you. He always helps you to get through your storm. Verse number 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. And he said, you're not going to have to fight. But you need to position yourself. And stand and see the deliverance of the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. So God is saying, hey. This thing is bad. I see it's bad for you there in Frederick. I see it's bad for you in Maryland. I see where they want to um, now come upon uh, this whole matter of making the uh, abortion issue such that it becomes a permanent thing under the Constitution of Maryland. We are in trouble. But when these things happen and when people walk away from God, then the judgment of God is going to come. So the church of the living God, then we are the ones who are able to stand up and worship the Lord and look to the Lord and ask the Lord to direct us and keep us from being destroyed by those who would lead us another way. He said, do not, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against him, but the Lord is with you. And you have to go out. You have to stand up against the devil. You have to put him in check. You have to bind him up in the name of Jesus. You can't do it, but if you do God's will, God will do it for us. Verse number 18 in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It said, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. He's humbling himself. And all of Judah and all of the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed down before the Lord. And they were worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites of the uh, children of the Korahites Kor and of the children of the Kor Korahites uh, stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices and uh, loud and, and high. They began to praise God. And this is where your victory is going to begin. You got to learn how to praise God when things are not going your way. When it's difficult, when the enemy is coming after you, when the devil got you seemingly blocked in. You've got to learn, and I have to learn, how to praise God. And notice how he, he prayed. He humbled himself. He bowed his head. They began, to, the children of Israel, the psalmists, the psalmists, they, the worship leaders, they all stood up and they praised the Lord of God, the God of Israel, with loud voices. So they rose early in the morning and they went down to the battle place. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, and the king is going to give them the word. Listen to the word that he gives. Hear me, O Judah, and your inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in him. Believe in your God. And you shall be established. So Jehoshaphat said, don't worry about it. Uh, the enemy is coming. God then gave his word. God has spoken to us. He's now said, believe you in the Lord God and you will be established. That means you will be able to stand in the midst of what's going on. He said, not only that, not only are you to uh, believe in God, you ought to believe the, the servants of God, the preachers of God, the prophets of God, and you shall be able to prosper. Why is it there is so much on prosperity. How come, in other words, we're not prospering in, 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 in the church of the living God? At least you ought to be prospering. And why should you prosper? Because you, first of all, been established by God's word. And secondly, you, uh, you are listening to the prophets of God and you're walking as the best you can as God would have you to walk. Verse 21 of chapter 20 of Second Chronicles says this, And when he had consulted with the people, when the king had, insult, insult, uh, had uh, uh, consulted with the people, he appointed those who could should sing to the Lord and who would praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord. 
for his mercy endures forever. This is an amazing piece of uh, scripture here. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I can see joining the army, but I, 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 he put the choir up front. He put the worshipers up front. He put the people who are praising God up front. And this is why I'm saying to you today, the power of praising God will send the devil packing. Now somebody said, well, what did you mean, Pastor, by packing? Well, you know, if, you, if you're if you at your house and sometimes the kids grow up or they get in the house and they want to um, uh, they want to tell you how to do things, how to run things, and all that kind of thing. Or you got a visitor that come over and, and they're trying to run the house and, and you say it's time for you to pack. That means it's time for you to go. It's time for you to leave this place. You, you No, 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 you can't run this place. I, I, I'm keeping you in check. I, I, this house belongs to us, not to you children, not to you family members, not to you, uh, those who are visiting with us. This house is our house. I'm, you can start packing. I'm sending you pack. In other words, you got to let the devil know it's time for him to get his stuff together and get out. All right. Yeah. That's what it means. And when they, when they had consulted, when, when, the, when the king had consulted with the people, he pointed singers to go in front of the army. Can you imagine that? He, he said, singers, bring me a singer. Got somebody who want to be a uh, soloist. You go first. <laughs> you go out and lead the thing. I bet a lot of folks would stop joining the choir if that was <laughs> the rule. But God said, put the choir out. Put the singers out. Put the worshipers out. Put those who will, who will lift up my name, who will praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. Get out there and tell him his mercy endure forever. He brought us through the muck and the mire, and his mercy endure forever. I was sinking deep, deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, but his mercy endure forever. He brought us out. Now, when they, when they began, now look at verse 22. This is a cute little verse. you like this one. Now, when they began to sing to the Lord and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes. Hallelujah. Against the people of Ammon, the Moabites and the Mount said the three enemies that's coming against them. When they began to praise the Lord and began to sing unto the Lord, praise that the Lord set ambushes. So let me tell you something. The battle, as bad as it is, is not your battle. And when I began to look at that, so I have to, in my mind, begin to think how God thinks so that I will be able to overcome. I got to see whatever is coming down the pike against me. This is as a child of the living God. This is not my battle. It's the Lord's battle. So I need to pull back and say, Lord, instead of murmuring and complaining, I'm going to lift up praises to you. I don't understand, God. What are you doing? I, all these people coming after me, but I'm going to praise you. Now, if you remember in the book of, uh, I think in uh, Exodus and and when you get down there and, and, and we see the children of Israel in the wilderness and, and they just in numbers, in numbers, the book of numbers, they murmuring and complaining and they murmuring and complaining. And God brings them out. He brought them out. Listen to me. He brought them out of, out of Egypt. He brought them out of Egypt. He brought them out of uh, bondage and slavery and all of that stuff. And he taken them along. He, he brought, they came to a place where there was water. And they were crying out because they uh, well, didn't have enough water. And God is leading about 2.5 to 4 million people. Who knows? There's a great number of people coming out of Egypt out of slavery. And God is leading And Moses is there. And Moses is leading them. And there is no water for the people. And the people began to murmur. And the people began to talk against Moses. And Moses said, really, you're not talking against me. You're speaking against God. You're not happy with God. And God and Moses, and Moses, God, God spoke, Moses spoke to God, and God, and God said, Moses, throw those branches in the in the water, to, and the water turns sweet. And then it went one thing after another, after another. We 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 want something to eat, Lord, and the Lord gave them manna, and, and they couldn't handle manna, and they said, we're tired of this this the kind of stinking no good bread that has come down from heaven. And they said, uh, then the God, God said, Moses, give them some water out of the rock. God pro made provisions for them. And then they said, we want some. Lord, we're tired of this bread. Uh, we're tired of the bread. Uh, uh, we're so tired of this bread. We want some meat. 
Where's the beef? Where's the, where's the meat? And God said, oh, my God. This is a stubborn kind of beef. So you're not praising God. You're complaining and you're murmuring. And right now in our country today, the country is murmuring and complaining. When those things may not be as they could be. They're not as bad as they are in some other places. So you need to back off and you say to God, Lord, thank you for what you're doing for us in spite of how bad things are. And so God is saying, learn how to praise me. And they began to sing. They began to uh, sing unto God and lift up praises. And God set up ambush, ambushes uh, against the people. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. So they started fighting each other. And they began to destroy each other. When the people had made prayer to God and praise to God, God destroyed them as they destroyed one another. The battle is not yours. I want to suggest to us today, as we're going through some difficult times in this country, and some of you, your difficulties are worse than other people, and we want to say to you today, if you ever needed the Lord, you sure to need him back. So don't let the Lord slip away. Don't let the Lord get away. If you can have a moment in time that you can get on your knees and, and you can cry out to God and say, God, I need you now. I need you now. And you begin to praise him and you begin to lift up holy hands and you begin to remember what he's done for you in the past. Sometimes you got to look back to see where God has brought you from. Sometimes we forget and when we forget we begin to murmur. It isn't what I used to do. It ain't where I used to be. It's where God has brought me to today. I can only look back and say, Lord, if it had not been for you on my side, I would have been swallowed up a long time ago. But you brought me out. You set my feet on a solid rock. I'm praising you. Right now it looks difficult, but it was difficult before, and you have brought me to this point. The Bible says that, and it came to place, uh, after a while it came to a place overlooking the wilderness. They looked toward the multitudes, and there were the, they saw that God, by them praising the Lord, had taken them out. They were dead. They, their bodies were falling on the earth. And the Bible said no one escaped. Wow. And all that was because they followed God's plan. They sought God. They praised God. And God said use the weapon of praise. Praise me. I take care of the battle. So when Joseph Asaphat and his people came to take away the spoils of the battle, in other words, all the stuff that the people had, they found, listen what they found. They found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies. They found precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. Praise God. And they were three days in gathering the spoil because it was so much. God will bless you. If you take the time to praise him and to walk with him, you'll cause the devil, the devil, the devil will be defeated. The devil go packing. He gets his mess. He runs. And then they said on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka. For there they blessed the Lord. And man, let me tell you something. After the Lord has blessed you, you need to go to the house of God, go somewhere, get on your knees, and give God the blessings. Therefore, the name of that place was called uh, uh, Baraka because uh, it was a place that they blessed the Lord. Then they returned every man to Jerusalem and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat, the king in front of them, to go back to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. So it came to it came, it came to Jerusalem. They came to Jerusalem with, well, listen, what they're what they coming with. Strained instruments. They came with harps. They came with the trumpets. And where did they go? They went to the house of God. Because they realized it was God. Listen, when God bless you, 
You need to take time to go back. You know, they came to God and said, Lord, we need you. We can't do this on our own. We can't fight the battle. God said, okay, I'll, I'll give you a plan. I'll give you my secret weapon. If you praise me, go out and praise me. I will take care of the battle for you. The battle's not yours. The battle's mine, said the Lord. And, 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 and then and you send the, the best singers you got down front. Let them praise the Lord. Let them worship the Lord. And I will get in the midst because the devil can't understand. He can't take the, when the church of God is praising me. They can't take when we praise God. The devils can't take that thing. That because Satan wants to be, don't wants to be, he wants to be worshipped. He wants to be the main guy. He wants to be in charge. But when they praise the Lord, the, the enemies of, of the Lord get confused and they became confused and they began to defeat themselves. When the church of the living God begins to praise God with all of their energy, with all of their soul, we're going to find out that God is going to bless us. And then after God has blessed you and God has given you the blessing, you know what you want to do? You ought to go back again to the house of God and you get in the house of God and say, God, we pray to you to bless us before we went out. But Lord, look at all of this. We got jewelry. We got all these things that they left by the wayside. We have the spoils of the enemy. The devil had to pack up. The devil had to leave us. The devil was evicted. He had to go because when the presence of the living God come into the situation, you, that the people of God is victorious and the devil must flee. Hallelujah to God. So they came with music. They came with praising to the Lord. Then the Bible says, And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of the world. How do you get unsaved people to take, pay attention? How do you get unsaved people to pay attention that there is a Jehovah God and his name is Jesus? How do we get people to take... When, when, when you walk before God and God turns the enemies to flight. The Bible says here, they took note. And the Bible said, and they feared the God of, uh, uh, of the Israelites. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. When we realize we've got a mighty, powerful God who will help us through all this confusion that's going on in our world today. When we realize that, God is going to pour out even more blessings. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. When God gets to work, he quietens things down. Our country is not quieting. Right now, it is very upset. It's disturbed. But God says, if my people call by my name, humble themselves, seek my faith, turn away from their wicked ways, hmm, then I will heal them from heaven. I will bless them. So, beloved, if we hook all that up with praise and, and power from God, then we will find out that God will deliver us. Amen. Amen. What I'm saying to you in conclusion now is simply this. God wants to fight your battle. Some of you are going through, some of you are trouble beyond measure today. You are, you are. The devil is working your case. He's too close to you. You got him up in your house. Mm -hmm. Riding around in that fine car you got. I mean, you got him all over the place. You take him with you when you go places. You got to stop that. You got to draw near to God. See, the only reason the devil can get close to you is because you're not close to Jesus. You see, the devil ain't going to hug up on Jesus. I'm going to tell you that like that. He's not. He respects who Jesus is. And when you and I respect the person and the uh, 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 the nature of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be able to or, or to defeat anything. He's the Almighty God. When we, you and I respect Jesus and have Him and embrace Him, the devil got have to back off of you. And I want you to notice these people didn't even fire one one bullet, one spear, whatever their military might was. They didn't fire one shot. You know why? Because they embraced. 
God by praising him and worshiping. So you in that home, you in that house, you in that family, change the way you approach things. Go out and seek the Lord. Bring the Lord into the house and the devil will have to get up out of your house. Those of you who are listening to us um, by virtual means today, God loves you so very much that he died on that cross for you. And if you ask Jesus to come into your heart and you begin to read God's word, I, I'm clear, you put this word inside of your heart, you're going to find that God is going to open up channels for you. You're going to change. I was telling the Bible study on uh, this past week that one thing that, that happens when we read the Bible, we begin to understand the heart of God. And when we begin to understand the heart of God, the heart of God becomes our heart. We begin to think like God. We begin to act like God. We begin to praise God like we ought to praise God when we have the heart of God. Those of you who are listening to us today, listen, hell is yours unless you accept the gift of God, eternal life. There is a hell and there is a judgment. God's word clearly speaks to that issue. And he says clearly that if you don't accept the gift of God, there only remains for you is eternal damnation. You can escape it today because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. He died on the cross so that you and I may have eternal life. That's the message today. I would ask you to pray a prayer with me. Now, at this prayer, if you mean this prayer and you confess your sins and you're willing to walk away from your sin, you will find that Jesus Christ will make a move on you to come into your life, to change your thinking and to change your matter of who you worship. You're going to either worship one or two things, two people. It's going to either be the devil and his host or you're going to be Jesus Christ. There's no other alternative. And God is saying, I plead with you. Ask me to come in. Ask me to come in. Confess that you've been wrong. Confess that you've missed a sin. And then he and missed and have sin. And he will come in and say, if you pray with me, oh God, here I am today. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. I want to be your child for all eternity. I love you, Lord. Thank you for considering me today. In Jesus' name, amen. You find a church that's teaching God's word and you let God work in you. And all that stuff you got, you worried about, let God handle it. The battle is not even yours. The battle is the Lord. We must let the devil go. We must evict him. And the power of praising God will help us to send the devil packing. God bless you. We look to hear, see you the next time. Amen.